Hey, you doing? It's Clayton here from HowToDrawComics.net, and welcome to today's video demonstration. In this particular time lapse, what I'm going to be showing you is the pencils that I created for a commission that I did for Richard Ems's Cyber Spectre. And this was a fun little project that he got me to do. Um, obviously, it uh, really caught my attention because of the fact that it included two female characters, which I totally enjoyed drawing. You know, uh, I think that the only reason that I became kind of okay at drawing women is because I really sucked at drawing them at first. And so I focused in on making sure that I was able to hone my skills in being able to depict the female figure in uh, a variety of different ways, mostly in the comic book medium. And this is really what I'm doing here for this commission and uh, what I'm using those, uh, I guess you could call them strengths for, or at least experience and, and knowledge for. And the first thing that I do within any illustration is I try to come up with a composition which is going to be appealing to look at and make sense to whoever is looking at it. So that's the main challenge that I'm focused on right here for the Cyber Spectre cover which I'm doing up. And Cyber Spectre is basically a sci-fi comic book as far as I've gathered. I actually haven't read it just yet, but uh, it's a sci-fi comic book and it's got these kind of cybernetic, half-robotic characters that are featured within it. You've got the main character, uh, Cyber Spectre, I believe that's the actual name of the, the main character within the book. And then we've got another character here who is going to be standing up and looking kind of off into the distance. I think that she's supposed to be Cyber Spectre's friend. I think they kind of work together to, you know, tackle the bad guys and kind of beat them up. And um, But, you know, I got a very vague description from Richard on exactly what he wanted to go for with the cover. But no matter who you're working with, you'll never really have a 100% clear idea as to what they exactly want for the commission that you're going to do for them, especially right off the bat. You know, oftentimes they they have the basics sorted out and they'll give you to they'll give those to you in dot point form. So you'll have a very, very basic idea to work with. But then you've got to refine that and kind of flesh out the details somewhat. And that's the process I'm going through here. So I'm doing up a series of different sketches for the composition of this comic book cover. And I'm trying to come up with something that I think Richard might want for the comic book. And so, you know, it's really an exploration process because I don't 100% know, like I'm not a mind reader. So I've kind of got to figure out the direction in which I'm going to take with this because the client might not know exactly what direction they want to go in either. And so it's your job as a comic book artist to be able, or really a concept artist, a designer of any kind, to be able to come up with what that vision is going to be, to figure out what the details are going to involve. And that is, again, an exploration process. It is a lot of experimentation and a lot of back and forth between you and the client. So you've actually got to show them what you've got in mind and confirm whether or not it's what they've got in mind. And ideally, when those two expectations link up, then you've got something that you continue are able to continue on with and refine a little bit further. And so what I tend to do before I really set anything in stone is... I come up with um, multiple different compositions in the form of these very rough thumbnail sketches that I'm able to pass on to the client and get the okay from them on whether or not it's the direction that they want me to take for the remainder of the illustration. So that was kind of the first little concept that I came up with. It was okay. And oftentimes the first one that I come, with, come up with I really want to stick with. You know, I won't, re I won't actually want to go beyond that and start exploring a variety of other different possibilities that I might be able to pursue because we tend to become tied to the the things that we put out first just because it, it's almost like this this inclination to con want to want to continue building upon it to want to continue refining it further and further but you know I really try to fight that and I try to come up with new ideas that we that could be 
again, refined to a greater level of detail and uh, articulation. So now, same process, I'm going through and I'm laying in these figures for the characters, okay? So, and you know, the basic brief really involved two characters that were going to be on the one page. Um, you'd be able to see their overall figure, so it'd be two full body characters. I always try to get this information from the client first and foremost, because it kind of determines, you know, how long it's going to take to complete this com commission. If there's two full body characters with a complex background, then that's going to take much longer than, you know, uh, one basic character with who, you know, you're only able to see, say, two thirds of her body with a very simplified background. So, you know, of course, being two different amounts of time that it takes me to complete one of these commissions, then that would affect how much it's going to cost. So I think as an artist, you really have to figure that stuff out. You have to determine how long it takes you to do particular types of illustrations. And that's not just going to be one number, that's going to be, you know, it's really going to come down to the, the variables of the illustration itself and what the client wants you to do. So it's not always going to be the same, but you can generalize it to a few specific types of illustrations that you have on offer as an artist that can be commissioned. And when I was first talking with Richard about doing up this commission, what I decided to do was I gave him those different options. You know, I said, look, I'm able to give you this type of uh, illustration with this many characters in it and a complex background. This is how much it's going to be. Um, I'm able to do this if you're on a tighter budget. And so, you know, by exploring these different options with the client and kind of going through it together, you're able to come up with something that you're both happy with. And uh, I think that this third thumbnail sketch that I'm doing up here is the one that we ultimately ended up going with because I sent him all three. You know, I'm doing up three of these basic sketches. Sent him all three and he really liked this one. So we decided to keep on going with it, refine it, and ultimately turn it into what would become the finished illustration that he used for the cover. And you'll notice that I'm working from quite a distance here so that I can get an overall look at exactly how the composition is coming together. This is really, really important for me to do at least. And I know that most artists work in this way just because it's it's much better to be able to get this broad overall view of how the illustration is going to come together as a whole because you're not getting caught up in the details. You're able to focus on the things that matter at this stage. You know, the details don't matter. The design doesn't really matter. And really the design for these characters have been sorted out. You know, again, Richard sent through a bunch of those for me to work from. But, you know, I'm talking about the details of, of the costuming and, and how exactly I'm going to, you know, weight the line work and, and kind of fill it out essentially and, and sharpen the image that it'll ultimately become. But in the beginning, what really matters is the composition, how the figures are laid out in relation to one another, how they're posed. And this is what I'm focused on first and foremost, whether or not those figures are in proportion with one another, because if they're not sized up correctly, they're going to look kind of weird. You'll notice that in this particular composition, we've got Cyber Spectre, okay, the main character who's sitting down on the ledge there of, you know, whatever building structure that I've created for her. And then we've got the other character in the background. Now, you'll notice that they're kind of two different sizes. And the reason that I've sized them differently is because I'm trying to indicate that the character which is standing up is actually a little bit further back, okay, even though she's standing. So her head is smaller, her anatomy, the figure overall is actually of a smaller size. Whereas Cyber Spectre, who is sitting in the forefront of the illustration, is quite a lot larger. So then these are the things that you have to calculate as you're laying out the figures. And it's not just the layout, as in whether or not you're putting them at the top or the bottom of the the page or, you know, to, out to the sides. It's really the depth as well. You know, how deep into the illustration are you putting them in and, and can kind of placing them in relation to one another? Because here we're seeing two characters, one at the front and one toward the back. And so you have to almost think about the page that you're working on as this 3D space that you've got to work with. And as you're plotting out the characters and how they're going to sit 
and how the overall illustration is going to be framed, this is the kind of thing that you have to think about, which is why it really does pay to construct your figures with form in mind, with these basic, very primitive shapes. And that's kind of what I've done. You know, I haven't, I don't usually articulate my figures with super clean primitive shapes, so to speak. You know, they, these don't look like cylinders. They're kind of, I guess, a, a merging of very, very basic anatomy and super simplified geometry, which I use to construct the figures super loosely. And you can see how loose it is. There's not any clean line work whatsoever within that underlying illustration that I've used to form the foundations of what it'll ultimately become. But now what I've done is I've turned that very basic sketch to blue using the color layer function within Manga Studio. That's the, the little blue square over to the right hand side of the screen. I created another layer above that and I've started to sketch out a much more refined version of how this illustration is going to look. And this is really the, the problem solving part of the illustration for me, because what I'm trying to figure out is as I construct the anatomy around those basic poses that I've done up thus far, I'm trying to figure out whether or not the anatomy is going to be able to sit around this pose in a correct way. And when I'm at this stage, this really determines whether or not the pose is in fact viable whether or not it's going to be able to be functional within reality. Because if I can't structure the character's anatomy around that pose, then usually there is something wrong with it structurally. It means that you know the pose doesn't make sense or I'm bending the figure in a way which wouldn't really be possible in reality. And there is room for exaggeration when it comes to comic book illustration, absolutely. And I try to push my characters to the max to which they're able to, to bend, twist, and and move the, the, the different parts that, that make them up. But, you know, there is still that limit where you can push it too far and the audience kind of doesn't buy what it is you're selling to them, where the pose looks broken, like the body has been twisted into an impossible position that would you know, again, make it look as though the pose is broken. Now, you can, of course, indicate a very, very exaggerated pose as being possible if you're an extremely smart and, and talented artist who is able to take an exaggerated pose and make it look as though it could work. I mean, that's a whole different ball game. And most of the time, you will get to that point with enough practice. Um, you know, you'll kind of bend the body around these gestures that are super energetic. And I think the pros really do this well. You know, you've got people like, you know, really the established image era artists like Todd McFarlane, for example, is always an artist who is brought up, especially with his work on Spider-Man, where he was able to come up with these insanely complex poses that he somehow managed to twist the anatomy of Spider-Man around and still make it look as though it worked. And no real person would be able to compose themselves within these uh, particular compositions that he was creating for the figure, but he managed to make it look as though it could be real. And I think that that's really the thing that you want to uh, figure out for yourself is where is that line for you? Because ultimately... Yeah, there is a point where a comic book character can be so stylized, so exaggerated, it just doesn't look real to the audience. But there are also there is also the case where maybe that same pose by a different artist would look completely different. In other words, maybe they would be able to make it work. So really it's a matter of suggesting that whatever wacky pose or composition or idea you're presenting to the viewer... The real challenge is making it look as though it could work in reality. And if you're able to do that, then it doesn't matter how crazy the idea is. Um, you will be able to present that to the audience. And as long as it, it looks as though it could be possible, that's the main thing. Doesn't mean it actually has to be possible. But if it looks possible, then, you know, you've nailed it. That's the, the primary challenge. So now I've figured out how the anatomy is going to fit around the pose that I've created. 
And we're getting into more the designy aspects of the characters that we've plotted out here for the composition. And so I've done exactly the same thing that I did with that underlying sketch. I've turned it, I've turned the anatomy to blue using that color layer function within Manga Studio. Very, very handy. The reason that I do that is so that I can create a visual distinction between the underlying drawing that I'm working on top of and what I'm placing in uh, over that over that particular foundation. Because otherwise, with all the line work and, and the layers of structure that I'm putting into the illustration as I compose it, it can be very confusing to figure out what's what. So, you know, I want to be able to see the cleaner line that I'm using for the design, and I want to know how that's coming together without the underlying rough sketch lines distracting me in any way. Okay, so I'm basically going over the top of the anatomy now and laying in the design for Cyber Spectre's costuming. And that involves the hairstyle, you know, how the hair is going to look. It's still very basic. It It is essentially at this point in time made up of a very rough overall sketch that indicates the mass of the hair and how it's going to flow. But as far as the texture and the rendering, there is none of that at the moment. And that's really going to come when we start to articulate the final line work with the inks in the next video, which I will probably come out next week. You know, I want to break these videos up a bit and give you a bit of different content so that, you know, we're, we're mixing, again, mixing things up a little. And uh, of course, to keep you coming back weekly, you know, I, I want to, I guess, make each one of these videos somewhat of a series. Um, so yeah, you know, this is the fun part because all the hard work is essentially done. And the hardest work, by the way, it, it doesn't take that long to pull it off, but it requires a lot of brain power. And that is in the drafting stage. It looks rough and it is rough, but really what I'm thinking about is the logical aspects of the design that are going to determine whether or not it's made or broken. And so once that's all figured out, I'm able to use that as essentially the, the mannequin, literally the mannequin that I can dress the rest of the design on top of. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. You know, I'm play I'm using the references that I was given by Richard Ems for Cyber Spectre and the other character as well, her friend here, and I'm using those as a reference point to place in the details, the more design oriented details of the characters at this point. And so I'm working on the face. The facial features are so important to me, especially when it comes to working with female characters. I find that if I'm not able to capture a beautiful, attractive, appealing looking face for my female characters, then oftentimes they will simply, it will essentially make the entire character appear flawed. You know, the face is really the first impression that people are going to hone in on when it comes to taking in the artwork or the characters that you're presenting to them. Because as people, what we try to look for when it comes to whether or not we're going to be able to connect with a person is their facial expression because it tells us a little bit about, you know, who they are, their personality. It gives us a whole bunch of different emotional cues as we interact with them and really whether or not we're dealing with a kind person or a happy person or an angry person or a dangerous person. And again, because the face is just capable of these intricate cues that give away how someone is feeling on the inside, you know, this, um, this non-verbal communication, these non-verbal forms of expression, then we're able to, again, hone in on and, and figure them out, relate with them, connect with them in some meaningful way. If your character's faces look bland and they're not really giving you any emotional communication um, and they're kind of unattractive, then that's going to turn people right off. Um, you can have a cool looking character that doesn't show any emotion. Really, the coolest characters tend to have a minimal amount of, I guess, emotional articulation that is presented across their face. And, you know, that that is, of course, something that, you know, cool people tend to have. That's why they're cool in the first place, because they're, they're kind of keeping their cards close to their chest. They're not giving anything away. 
But, uh, you know, when it comes to if you're going to have that, then you have to make them look cool. And part of what makes them look cool is, of course, having that iconic attractiveness about them, making sure that the attractive cues are actually implemented within the, the character's face. And then, of course, you know, the body and the figure. These are classically, you know, good looking women with a fit body. Um, and, of course, that's just what the character entails. You know, she's a superhero. Of course, she's she's going to be fit. She might not be able to uh, get around as easily in an unfit uh, looking body you know she she's going to be athletic to some extent um, of course you know the cybernetic uh, parts of her body are going to help her get around no doubt they're probably they've probably super powered her movement to some extent to give her additional agility and that kind of stuff but again you know your character whatever kind of character you're doing it needs to make sense on a visual level and that needs to be combined with something that looks cool, something which is going to be uh, appealing to the audience. So this is where we're going to leave it for this particular portion of the development of this comic book illustration. And next week, when I release the next part of this particular illustration, uh, what we'll do is we'll jump into the super ultra fine-tuned refinement of the cover and how that's all going to come together i'm going to walk you through my inking process and talk a little bit about that so i hope that you got a ton of value out of this video if you like more comic art tutorials and videos uh, we've got a podcast now so podcast episodes or you'd like to delve into the art of comic book illustration on a somewhat deeper more comprehensive level with our courses, make sure that you visit howtodrawcomics.net, our, our home site. I look forward to seeing you there. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.